Every thing in this world is made up of something that is simpler or smaller than it is. And the world of mathematics is no exception to this rule. Which is why big numbers such as this one are made from smaller numbers that we call factors. factors. Polynomials such as this expression also have factors of their own. And in this video, I will give you a light-hearted introduction on how, how to, to factor, factor polynomials. polynomials. From our previous videos about polynomial multiplication, you learned how to expand expressions by multiplying polynomials. To make the concept simple, think of factoring polynomial expressions as the opposite of expanding expressions. Now, factoring or factorizing is kind of like splitting this polynomial here into a multiplication of simpler expressions like this. As an example, let's try factoring this simple expression. Both 3x and 12 have a common factor of 3. 3x is 3 times x. 12 is 3 times 4. And because we identified this common factor, we can now rewrite the whole expression into this. The expanded polynomial 3x plus 12 has been factored into 3 and x plus 4. Now the previous example we did showed that 3x and 12 had a common factor of 3. But it doesn't mean that the common factor is limited to just constants. Which means that, yes, variables can also be included in the common factor. The rule of thumb is that we always look for the highest common factor. Kind of like the GCF or greatest common factor when factoring whole numbers and integers. So let's amp up things a little bit by factoring both constants and variables alike. Let's try factoring 5x squared minus 25x. First things first, you can spot that 5 and 25 have a common factor, and that is, yeah, 5. Which means that we can rewrite the expression as 5 times x squared minus 5x. But you know what? We can do much better than that. 5x squared and 25x also share the variable x, which means that the greatest common factor here is actually 5 times x, or 5x. And now, we rewrite the expression again into its simplest form, which is 5x times x minus 5. But it doesn't end there. It is quite common for beginners to make mistakes when they start to factor polynomials, which is why you have to always check your answers and all your mistakes will be forgiven. Right, so let's do this. It is actually pretty simple because you just have to do the opposite of factoring, which is expanding the expression. And you do this using polynomial multiplication. Pretty simple, right? Right? Yes? No? Because if not, you should probably watch our videos on polynomial multiplication. No, seriously. seriously. Go back and watch our videos on how to multiply polynomials and other special case products because if you don't have a solid foundation on these topics, then you'll just end up frustrated no matter how many videos you watch on factoring polynomials. And that is because factoring can be ultra hard. The last two examples were pretty simple, but I can tell you from extensive algebra experience that factoring can become really tricky quite fast. I mean, think about it. It is like figuring out the ingredients that went into a delicious cake. 
If you've got a lot of baking experience, then it is quite simple. But what if you lack that baking experience? It can be ultra hard to figure out. Factoring means that you have to figure out what got multiplied to produce the polynomial expression you were given. And in this case, that baking experience is actually polynomial multiplication and polynomial special case products. So, the more familiar you are with these topics, the easier it'll be for you to factor polynomials. So I'll give you a crash course here and jog your brain a little bit. This is to boost your factoring experience and make things much easier for you in the future. And on we go to the next example. At first glance, there doesn't seem to be any kind of common factor because there is no common constant between 16z squared and 9. And there is no common variable either. So, do you think I'm just trolling you around and there really is no way to factor this binomial? Of course, of course not. not! This is where the polynomial special case products come in. And in this example, that special case product is called the difference of two squares. This is because 16z squared is equal to 4z squared and 9 is equal to 3 squared. And we now have 4z squared minus 3 squared. This polynomial expression can now be factored using the difference of two squares pattern, but with a equal to 4z and b equal to 3. So, let's rewrite the expression. And it is over! The factors of 16z squared minus 9 are 4z plus 3 and 4z minus 3. Congratulations! Congratulations! You have now experienced your very first complicated factoring. But the thing is, your teachers or examiners are most likely to give you more and more complicated factoring. So, how do you learn to factor polynomials like this? By getting lots of Practice, 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 practice! And having awareness of the polynomial special case products or identities. Here is a list of common identities that you should familiarize yourself with. Remember them and you will have a, a much, much easier, easier time, time factoring polynomials. So, to summarize the lessons in this video, here are the basic steps you should follow. First, Factor out all the common terms you find. Second, keep an eye on polynomial special case products that might be hiding in plain sight. Third, factor, factor, and factor some more until you can't factor the expression anymore. And by the way, like, like this, this video, video and be, be sure, sure to, to subscribe, subscribe to Teach Me Animated Math because we will upload more detailed explainer and solve along videos about all the possible methods you can use to factor polynomials. So, goodbye and see you next time.